The following is a presentation of WON Sports, America's home of champions. All season long, we have been raising money for bowlers and their families in the fight against the costs of this terrible disease. Donate today and take part next season by going to candlepins4cancer.com as you see it on your screen. Introducing the stars of our first ladies ladder match, the number five seed with a roll off score of 555, Amy Doobie. And the number four seed with a roll off score of 558, Peggy Donnelly. And now your hosts, Paul Grant and Mike Morin. Well, thanks, Greg Gouillard. Welcome to those on Kenneth Mall Network and WON Sports Network, New York. Hello, Jonathan Rios out in New York as well. we got Peggy Donnelly here. Peggy bowling for 30 plus years, starting your 30s. Yes. How'd you get started in bowling? What got you interested? I bowled with a friend. Yeah. And I thought, this is fun. <laughs> you still bowling at a very high level still. Well, okay. <laughs> Who's one of your bowling heroes you look up to? Um, I gotta say, when I started bowling, it would be Janet Puck. Um, she just—I watched her on TV. She could bowl with anybody, male or female, and I just thought that that was a, a great thing. Yeah, she's in the Hall of Fame too. Good luck today. Good luck today. All right, Mike Warren with Amy Doobie. Thank you very much. So I realize that if you are playing any lottery today, you should play the number five. Okay, why? Well, the reason is because oh. you're starting in fifth. Mm -hmm. You had five fifty-five. And your world mixed teams came in fifth place. That is true. That is true. So That's there's your point. lottery. All now. right, I got it. And you don't owe me any commission on that. Okay, fair. I like it. I'm gonna do it. So uh, actually, didn't you? Uh, your daughter recently graduated with a master's in biomedical engineering. She did. Wow. Yep. She's actually here today too. <laughs> really? She's got some. You got? Yeah. She's got some brains working in the family. Yeah, I definitely think it's all from me, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck to you today. Thank you. All right, Amy. Paul? Okay, thanks. We're going to do three strings. We're going to go two blocks at a time. Let's get in the way. We're at Exeter Lane Shooters Pub, Exeter New Hampshire on Candlepin Bowling Network and WON Sports Network. Thanks, Paul and Mike. And remember, Candlepin scores just like big ball bowling, but you roll three small balls instead of two big ones. Also, any pins dropped on the deck stay on the deck and can be used as live wood. Even spares are rare, so picking pins is essential to success. All right, thank you, Greg. Again, welcome to those watching this match. Please share with your friends and family. Invite your friends to bowl Candlepin Bowling. Nothing like it. And again, a special shout out to our friends on the WON Sports Network. Great place to bowl since 1946. Started with six lanes. Six lanes added in 1952. Classic lanes just slicked up for the new fall season. And the pins are hopping here. We're on lanes four and five. Amy Doobie, the veteran bowler, starts off. The number five seed slides left and gets three, the four, seven, eight. We'll bring in Mike Moore in just a moment. Qualifying score, like Greg said, 5.55 was awesome that day. And I thought again, 1, 3, 9, and 10, just like 10 pin bowling, but three balls instead of two. 2.8 pound candle pin, pins, 2.4 to 2.7 pound balls allowed, the maximum. Three balls instead of two, same scoring system. She's out to the seven, the first of three. Let's bring in Mike Morin. I love this place. This is the second time I've been here. The lanes look like they're in amazing condition. Pins are nice and clean. Everything sounds crisp. It's a typical, beautiful bowling match, sound-wise and visually, too. Well, Darren did a great job here. I was always helping us out. And one of the best owners in the game, Rob Vaccaro, senior. Amy Doobie now in lane four. Two, four left, six to the right. Wood behind. Pretty shot when it goes. Doesn't go too often. Will it get an oh wow out of you if it does? Sure. Miss left again. <laughs> Fourth seed Peggy Donnelly up next. Face Sawyer is the two seed. And next match is the three seed. Face so uh, excuse me, another three seed is Madison Riva as Amy gets an eight. So Madison Riva takes in the one of this match, then Face Sawyer, the number two seed, and 20 year old Sharon Britton, who had a 586 qualifier, is the number one seed. And she's the youngest of all the bowlers. I think she's, what, 20 years old? <laughs> yes, 20. Very, very good very good ball on the rise. 15 sure. through 2 for Amy Doobie. Here's Peggy Donnelly. Beautiful ball. People are great of late. Nine. 
Wood in front of the 10 to help. She would make a terrific 10 pin bowler because she's got that right to left curve. Yeah. For a spare, right on it. Spare to start her match. And that is the most difficult single pin spare for a bowler with any kind of a curve on their ball, especially a right hander. So a good start for Peg Donnelly. And she'll see what she can fill this first frame spare with. P-E-G-I, Peggy Donnelly in lane four on the bonus. Crossing over, seven, make it eight. And we get the Star Trek character already, seven of nine. Played by Jerry Ryan, <laughs> great actress. The new Picard series too, season one through three. I'm not sure how, how helpful this piece of wood through is, one. but I suppose it's better than nothing on the deck. Try to kick it over, good bid, right behind the nine. Nice try. Two for two in the head pin, solid start. Does that step back approach. That'd be a balk in baseball. <laughs> and a nine. Strong start, 27 through two. Early 12 pin lead for the number four seed, Peggy Donnelly. Three bowlers had a 558. Crazy in this that's, format. That's weird. So basically you've got first place, then you've got three people tied for second, and then you have a fifth place person. But there were a number of tiebreakers at play to actually put the order of the three bowlers who had 558. Amy just missed the head pin. Four horsemen, one, three, six, ten. The eight in the back left. Mike, with the play-by-play. -play. All right. So there it is, the four horsemen on the right side with the eight in the back. A little bit of wood that is of little consequence, probably, unless you can get it mixed in with the spray. Missing the object pin. Going for the the number one pin, and she's got it for a 10 box. Nicely done. She'll move over now to lane four here at Exeter Lanes. All five of these bowlers, Mike, in the Sunday month, once month pro league here, coverage on Candle from Bowling Network throughout the season, starting in September. They bowled two, two matches, and some of the best bowlers in the game. There you go. Oh, wow, baby. <laughs> Good time for first head pin hit, a strike. Uh, got some good momentum going, picking up the 10 box, hitting the single one pin, and then once again hitting the head pin and getting some really good action. 35 plus two through four in the first of three on Cannon Bowl Network and W. Owen Sports. Back to Mike. Well, she put that ball down not where she wanted to because it took off and went too far to the left, taking just a couple down. But she's not on a spare, so uh, nothing lost in that regard as far as Phil goes. Pretty good try. She went Brooklyn again, or left, leaving the 5, 7, 8, and the 10. The 10's got a little wood in front. She'll go for the 5 pin and see what she can make happen. And an 8 box gives her 35 through 3. Still having the lead through completed boxes, but now she's up against a strike in the fourth frame. Mike, great to work with you again. Always a pleasure and an honor. Thank you. I always am happy to uh, get the invitation. Oh, she deserved way better than that. And they're still falling. So I, now, it is the seven, uh, the six, seven, eight, and the ten. Nine and the ten, excuse me. It's early. <laughs> it is. Three for four in the head pin. Almost turned it into a cut shot, bypassing the wood. I thought she was going to hit the right. I think she was trying to hit that tip right of the wood. I think she was, and she didn't miss it by much. That's for sure. Another Star Trek character, seven nine. I uh, I have to learn my Star Trek trivia because I'm, I, I'm not a Star Trek fan. I like that. I like her act. She's a great actress, and I like that show, Picard. And I, I've never watched an entire episode. No, so. I'm a Dark Shadows fan growing up, I've and heard six that. million dollar man. Steve Austin. Nine bucks, 44 through four for Peggy. Amy needs nine in the fill to tie it up. Back to Mike Morin. All right, hope for a double. Just a little bit too full on the head pin, leaving the four and the 10. A little bit of wood just to the left of the four pin. She's two for four in the head pin, two in a row. So if she could carry it over from the left sidewall, that might be helpful. Correction, two for five in the head pin, I should say. Yeah, bypass the object pin completely. 
Eight in the strike, 43, down one. Good close match here, the first of three games between these two bowlers. And the winner move up to uh, maybe the hottest bowler right now in the women's circuit, and that is Madison Riva. Oh, yeah. Did I read that uh, that that uh, she, her um, ball speed was clocked at 39 off the, the right, gun? Right around, right around there, yeah. Wow. Yeah, she does pretty fast ball. It's a strike machine. 52 half for Amy Doobie. Back to lane four, Mike Lauren. Just a little bit to the right of the head pin, leaving the one, two, four, eight, and ten. And some wood on the back that could be very helpful if she hits it right. It looks like it's going to stay on the deck for Amy Doobie. From Fremont originally. High single of 198. And her high triple is 480. Pretty solid credentials for Amy Doobie. During a peak season, she had a 115 average, currently 99. She gets a 10, 62 through 6. So, Mike, I bought, a, I bought a special candy bar, if you'd say, the Sky Bar from Neko. They discontinued it for a while. The Neko wafers, they make the yes. same. Yes, uh, so produced locally here. That's a great candy bar, the Sky Bar, and the old-fashioned yellow wrapping. Thank you for that. That'll be my good energy boost. Is that in place of our usual granola bar today, Paul? <laughs> I, I have those two for you. You do? Yeah. And Greg Gouy and I are fighting over chocolate chip and uh, peanut butter ones at the Mixed Worlds. <laughs> <laughs> I like the chocolate chip ones. I hate peanut butter breath. Yeah, I, far be it for me to say it might be time to get a life if you're fighting over that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just messed around. <laughs> All right, there's the clothesline, as some call the four horsemen. That's too bad. It looked like she hit it in the right spot. It only goes about 36% of the time yeah. for pro bowls. The wood stats by Kenlip and Bowling Network. And it falls off just before getting to the seven pin for an iron box. And a 53 half. 66 years old. Takes would good never, care of herself. Takes would, real good care of herself. Would never have guessed it. Absolutely. I think she's into line dancing. She I, is, yeah. And that I, I think probably. I, I have no clue how to dance. I have three left feet when it comes to dancing. Three. <laughs> dancing with the stars today. Paul Grant with three left feet. Only in, only in dreams. All right, this, this one definitely goes, but got it at the uh, object pin, which Peggy did not. Uh, from Boxford, although originally from Portsmouth, New Hampshire. High triple is 416. Again, she, like Amy, solid credentials. I do like her style, being a, uh, you know, uh, a holdover from the 10 pin days where I grew up. And we're see, see that kind of delivery. So we're, not, we're tied now, 62 apiece. Scratch scoring, no handicap, obviously. Three string format, the winner takes on number three seed, a tough one, Madison Riva. Peggy so, lost the second tiebreaker as they both had a 121, but Peggy had a 116. Madison had a couple of marks the last two blocks, that fifth qualifying string to get to 121. Yeah. And so the second tiebreaker, she won with the 119. So, Paul, have you ever had a, uh, a, 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 a bunching like this before? Not in, like this, no. We've seen close scores, but not three like this. We've seen two, not three. Right. And then you had to go too deep on, on one of the tiebreakers. Yes. For Madison and uh, Peggy. And when you look at Amy Doobie, had she bowled four pins higher, she'd be the number two seed. Yeah. Every pin counts, you never know. That's that's today's takeaway, I think. Nice 10 for Amy Doobie. 72 through seven, great crowd on hand. Extra lane shooters pub, great place to bowl. A $39 bowling deal all year round. Five bowlers, one lane, 75 minutes. A free, delicious 18 inch award winning pizza, pitcher of soda, and free shoes. Double the value, 10 bowlers, two lanes, 90 minutes. Two pizzas, two sodas, free shoes. Great deal, 6 Columbus Ave, ex New Hampshire, I, Shooter's Pub. I did a book signing here uh, when Lunch with Tommy and Stacia was out, and I had some pizza. It was amazing. It looks great. It tastes terrific. Great staff here as well. What time will our eyes be delivered? About noon or so? We'll get it for you on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I have enough trouble driving with both eyes on the road, both hands on the wheel. There's a bypass the... Uh, not too difficult, one, two, spare. She went to the left and goes to the left again. All right, so that gives her an even 80 through eight and giving Peggy now an opportunity to uh, make up some ground with only 18 pins to overcome. Start Go ahead. Had a spare eight to start. Amy a strike eight in her fourth box. Ty going to this through six boxes completed. Back to Mike. 
All right, there it is, the four horsemen on the right side. Nope, make that the uh, three horsemen. One of them <laughs> decided to bail. So it's the one, the three, and the ten. The and pack. actually, that yeah. might even be easier. Ah, oh. oh. wraps around the three. Tuck rake. Probably about a board or two too far to the left on that, leaving the single pin, the three. Boy, the whites look so shiny now. They did a great hey, job this past week or two. I need my sunglasses. <laughs> All right, so I thought you wear your sunglasses at night. Yeah, I do. Like Corey Hart. I, uh, yeah. Fine Canadian singer. 71 through 7, the first of three on Canopy Bowl Network and WON Sports New York. There you go. That's, that's where she wanted it. That ball came back with a vengeance, leaving only the seven pin. And uh, the wood is not really, I think the ball could go between the, the dead wood and the seven. So she definitely wants to go head on to it here. Uh, you go right at that pin. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's annoying when that happens. She was Maybe trying to go for the pin, but she just missed it. Yeah, she was a little too careful, perhaps. I don't know, it didn't have the usual pizzazz, but she'll pick this one up. One of the advantages of a candle, you can play the wood on the playing surface. That's and that's it. a Paul Grant special. Yeah. Missed the second, make the third for a 10. <laughs> 81 through 8, she's up by 1. Very good match so, so far. Nobody really uh, stepping out and getting too aggressive yet. A couple of boxers just sparring in the early stages in the ninth box of three games. Amy Doobie, final two boxes. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, she's gone left uh, quite a few times, which has given her some fits trying to make some of these spares. The half Worcester is punched out the 2 and the 8. I thought she was going to get the half Worcester on the other side. And that is makeable, or at least you pretty much hope for a 9 on this, maybe a 10. Got to hit it right, though. Celebrates her birthday this Thursday. It is. Tough 6. 86 to 9. Close match. Second half, not Madison quite as Madison Live was the winner, winner of this match. Sorry, but Mike, go ahead. I was going to say the second half has been a bit of a fall off after she uh, had a strike in the first half. Speaking of Madison Riva, that is one of the two spare leaves that she dislikes the most. That one and the mirror version on the other doesn't side. Go, that one's decent, but it's, it doesn't go too yeah. often. Yep. Yeah, boy, it's going to be threading the needle here. Yeah. Case in point. You're a 10 pin bowler yourself growing up in Detroit, Michigan? Yes. That is, that is correct. When did you find Candlepin? I found Candlepin in 1984. You made it sound like, when, Mike, when did you find religion? <laughs> <laughs> Three head pin hits only in that string, which gets a 96 opening string for the number five seed, Amy Doobie. Well, one mark right here for Peggy would, uh, it was some good fill. Four, four head pin hits, sorry. The win on the first game. Four head pin officially, Mike, sorry about that. There it is, the one, the eight, and the nine. Tougher than it looks. You come here bowl for the first time, and you say, oh yeah, just put the ball in the middle and right up, no. No, not that easy. Oh, wow, what a shot that was. Not easy unless you are Peggy Donnelly, then it is. You can't make the single pins, but you can make the three pin like that. That was a Story great Story of my shot. life bowling. <laughs> wow, that was incredible. Well, here's a chance to load it up with a good fill. And perhaps another spare to give her a possibly a two mark edge going into game two. Weebles go! The gut does go! Wow! <laughs> Slow motion strike on spare! Wow! What a finish! 90, make it 101 through uh, 9, 111 plus stay 2 on in the lane 10. Four, I think. Stay on lane four. Uh, I mean, she got a shot at a one, well, a 131 game. She got two more strikes. But, yeah. Uh, boy. She, like I said, she's been going great. Uh, she was terrific in the roll-offs, too. You know, there was maybe an inch difference from where that ball hit from the one that gave her a strike. So both unofficially four head pin hits in that first string. Extremely accurate and good action on the ball with the 6-7-10. Have, having that wood there is a little bit helpful. Nice shot. Nine. How about a 120 opening string? 120. So 24 pin advantage 
after game number one of three here at Exeter Lanes. Candlepins for cash. Amy, one second. Amy, one second. All right, back, to, back with that second screen in just a moment on Candlepin Ball Network and WON Sports. Welcome to my world. You've made a big mistake. Big mistake attempting to come in here and kill Kara Kent. What? Kara Kent? Who's that? Are you crazy? Hold it right there. <laughs> you imposter. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not the imposter you are? This is my world. I don't think so. Stop right there, imposter. Listen, you straight idiot. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not the imposter? I'm the real superwoman. You're the imposter. Me? Why you? You are very brave and stupid woman. You've crossed the line. You insulted my intelligence and invaded my area. The people in this world who cross me get punished in the most brutal and lethal way. You're going to find out that I mean business. Hello, Captain. Super lady here. Listen, I need you to do me a big favor. Taking out the trash that has no business being here in town. And welcome back to the latter two series. Our first round, number five seed Amy Doobie, number four seed Peggy Donnelly. Peggy Donnelly takes the first string, 120, 96. Amy Doobie will set her second string. <laughs> Greg Gouillard here, Bob Lee as well. I do like her shirt, it's pretty cool. I just got one myself too. Like that one? Yeah, it's very comfortable too. Does it say Doobie on it also? No, it was oh. Grant. Okay. Oh, nice there ball, nine. Go. do that a little bit more get back at this match because 24 pins is a bit of an uphill climb this is for a spare right on it <laughs> 10 in the ball to start the second of three from Exeter very confident shot at that seven pin no hesitation extra line shoot is probably six kilometers have great place to bowl great place to hang out great food great people check it out Amy on the bonus, on the nose, uh, Red Eagle. Talk about a bullseye shot. Well, that's the discouraging part of this game is, you know, you're finally getting back on the head pin. She'd been going left all last game, and now she's on the head pin and four pin, pin fill. Spread Eagles go about 1% without Wood for Pro Bowl. It's stats by Kendall Lowell Network, one in five for a 10, and that one went in the channel. Here's Bob Lee. A little observation with the speed gun uh, data, uh, Mike and Paul. Amy threw about 
15 balls in the first string. All, all 15 of them measured at 28 miles an hour. First, first two shots here, 30, 30, and 30. <laughs> You know, first three shots. Um, so she gets, she's a little fired up, you know. She was a little wild on that on that uh, first attempt on the spread eagle, but wow, I, I think she just up, uh, ramped up a little bit. That's, That's pretty Lee. telling. Seven box, 21 That's through tough, two. Bob. Yeah. 21 through two in the second of three. On Kenneth Mullen Network and WON Sports, Peggy Donnelly, strong finish. A spare strike nine to go from 81 through eight to 120 and a 24 pin lead on the head pin here to start a second. Guess you want to put it right in the V with the standing pin and the deadwood. Two five in the eight and just yeah. missed it. Knew it right away. Got ahead of herself there. Got to the line too quickly. And her arm couldn't catch up to put it where she wanted to. And wide right that time. Seven. Missed opportunity. Last uh, That's a good thing. Some bowlers get stressed when they make miss a shot like that. But she laughs it off. That's good. It keeps you mentally focused in the game. You know, personality and, and temperament is a big part of this game. To keep yourself on an even keel. Off to the right, just four. A lot of bowlers tell me 80, 90, probably 90% of the game is mental. Because you, if you have the talent, you'll get, you get your scores. Just how you bounce back from splits. And I think you're right about that. The muscle memory comes if you've got good temperament. Oh. Chips out one, five standing, parallel pins. That doesn't look anything like the Peggy Donnelly of last string at the end. No, no, four to the left. Mike Moore, an author also. Nice out, nine. 16 through two in the second and three from Exeter. Down five in the string, up 19 in the match. Mike, talk about your books you've written. Well, I've written one about my radio career, which has been long and fun, and uh, that was called Fifty Shades of Radio. True stories of a morning guy being wired, tired, and fired. Then lunch with Tommy and Stacia, the golden age of TV's canopy bowling. That would be my favorite book so far. And then I just did a book uh, late last year on the history of the Red Arrow Diner called If These Walls Could Talk. The Red Arrow Diner, if you're not from around here, is probably the most loved place to have a good morning breakfast in New Hampshire. And a lot of celebrities there, politicians too. Uh, yeah, exactly. Beautiful ball for Doobie, almost. Folks, come by today. You've got a nice uh, variety and selection of colors and styles of the WOW T-shirt yep. to help Candlepins for cancer. Yep, so almost uh, getting close to 600 soon. That one got away, 9, 30 wow. through 3. We've got the Lemon family so far, 5 of the Lemon Drop, which is the 4-6 pin on your first ball, 5 on a mark, 10 if you Bob, uh, ten if you Mike Morin. <laughs> so it looks as though uh, Amy's going to get back into this game here. Peggy is opening the door for her after taking a 24-pin advantage. And there's a really nice hit. <laughs> Fresh lanes, a lot of pins are moving here. Three pin for a spare. Just a three pin. Wood, wood behind it, not, not frozen, I don't think. Right on it. Second spare the second, 40 the ball through four. How quickly things change after the big finish by Peggy. Now she is the one looking up at Amy at the start of game number two. Started with a 24 pin advantage. That is uh, slowly going away, but she's got a chance now to uh, make up for the relatively poor start, at least for her standards. Amy had a strike in the first two spares here in the fourth. Donnelly on the nose, nine. If it's a third nine drop, the queen pin for the ladies, the five, known uh, as the king pin. Look at that. With frozen wood up against the five, it looks like it is. Sometimes you're fooled and it's not. For a spare, missed it. Oh, that one hurts. Yeah. Remember that shot, folks. Been there, done that. Sometimes it's so simple you can overthink it. It looks so easy with the big pin in front. And that's a Paul Grant special. <laughs> missed a second, make the third for a 10. Missed opportunity, 26 through three. Here in the second of three, Madison River. Plays the winner, face Sawyer, the number two seed, 20 year old Sharon Britton, the number one seed after that. Now on lane four. Peggy trying to bounce back, that one got away, just two, yeah, it's six and 10. The last several shots in this game have gone far to the right, where she was banging that head pin really well. Uh, in the previous game. So, not really sure what's going on with that. Bowling since 1993, 
Off to right again, four horsemen plus the nine, one, two, four, seven. Yeah, it's interesting. She was, what, 30-ish or so when she started bowling? Yeah, in the 30s, yeah. Her mom was a, uh, she described as a casual bowler. Yes. And tried it and liked it and got really good at it. Good bid. Almost. Another Star Trek character, seven and nine. That'll be an eight box. That's three seven and nine shots. 34 through four. Amy's up six in the string, plus a ball. Right now she's down yeah. 18. And cut the single digits with the nine fill, a greater. Going to cut it in half right here with a, a decent fill and a makeable spare. And these two bowlers, mutual respect, good friends for a long time. Great respect to one another, and Peggy's cheering on. Great sportsman, sportsmanship the way it should be. On the bonus, four has been left, the one, two, four, seven, 46 through four. Up 12 in the string, down 12 in the match. Even though she missed the right, on that one, she has not been going to the left as she was last game. And I know she realized it, picked up her speed, and well. What'd you say, Mike? That she goes left. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies, Amy. You gotta stop micing people up. <laughs> I know. Can we fix that in post-production? <laughs> <laughs> now for a 10 box, splits the uprights. 56 half, the number five seed. So through completed boxes, a 12-pin lead in this game, and that cuts it in half. It was 24. Mario Johnson, the first ladder series, the Big 20 in Scarborough, Maine, January 14th on Camp Mill Network. She was the number five. She climbed the ladder, but lost eventually to number one seed, Amanda Carroll. Yeah, that was a great day. Amanda Carroll just really was, was right on her game, for sure. Four horsemen plus the nine on lane four here in Exeter. Gets the nine. Yeah, bit of a drop on that one. Looks so simple. Again, just over one in three bullets. Convert this. Stats by Kenneth Mulling Network. Grab three for nine. 65 through six in the second of three. Play by play with Mike Warren. All right, we'll have another look at Peggy Donnelly, who uh, the last several boxes has thrown the ball to the right, and I mean way far to the right. Uh, missing the head pin on first shots and then the, the five pin uh, layup shot with the piece of wood right across the front of it, the plank as we call it. That's a little bit closer and a good fill. Now she had the one pin go down, which she made the 189 last game. It was a beautiful shot. That tough piece of wood in the right. Yeah, it is. Asking Celeste Buckmore keeping score, the official Thank scorekeeper here today for Rice. Another great ball and a great classy lady, Celeste Buckmore. Oh, got the kick off the wall and the bounce back. That's got to feel good after a really, really tough start for her. And that's going to keep her back in this match. Her first mark of the string, 44 half plus one. Won the first, 120 to 96. Uh, only a two fill. Again, too far to the right. Four. After most of her boxes hadn't been that way. 46 half. Phil she's had actually the others were eight nine and ten and now a center diamond about a 27 success pro rate without wood stats by Kim will never probably yeah just a little about the approaches that the bowlers are taking take take a, take a good look at Peggy she always takes a step back to about 12 feet behind the line in a three three uh, step approach her ball is is breaking about five inches right to left um, I, I, you know, her misses. She's tended to leave it a little right. It just, it just, it's, it's, it's she's just hurling it right, and, and the has nowhere near enough time to go back. Amy Dubé, on the other hand, um, starts in the middle from 11 feet, and then she comes up and releases the ball from in front of the six pin. Dubé's been up around 29, 30 miles an hour, like I said before. Um, all of her balls in this second string, where she's been a little bit more effective. Peggy, we've been measuring at 27. Peggy, 54 through six, not 11 in the string, up. 13 in the match. Back to Mike Warren. Stats don't lie. There you go. Four horsemen and a pin in the back. Tough spare. That's her third spare this game. And she is definitely uh, angling for the lead here. Midway through, just a little bit midway through our three-game string to determine the winner and to see who plays Madison Riva. Spare in the first, fourth, and seventh. Who had a 558 qualifying score. How about that? Now it seems like you missed the head pin in the first ball. They only converted one every other two times on official. It just seems like doing the matches I call a lot. It seems like you, you get away with it, but then sometimes you relax on it sometimes and throw it away. That's the world realigning itself. She had that spread eagle fill earlier as well. 
Thanks, Greg. There's a nice shot. Back-to-back -back spares. That's her fourth of this game. She has taken the lead now. 84 through 7, 94, and a ball through 8. All right, let's see what Peggy does with that 5-inch hook that Bob Lee just uh, explained to us. Nan's got a good eye for the game, for sure. There it is. And she has a diamond. You know, if she hits the 1-3 pocket, she gets good action. The Get problem that. has been, she hasn't been. Yeah, that would help that sleeper pin, the 8 in the back, to help. Very helpful. A little too late, they broke in. Yeah, the ball was just a little too thin on the object pin, unfortunately. It, but uh, if she stays there, she's going to be back in this match because she has fallen behind. Ten bucks, 64 through seven. So she's like uh, Paula Abdul. Two steps forward, I take three steps back. <laughs> Another dancing reference. You're full of them today. Uh, I can't you? dance at all, though. You keep saying that. I have a feeling it's otherwise. I'm like Billy Ocean, a Caribbean Queen song. I, I can move my body, but not my feet. <laughs> that, that video on MTV? Yes. Billy Ocean, Caribbean Queen. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, I remember it, yeah. That was a big hit for him in 1984. Nice shot. Oh, I thought she had it. With a little kick off the wall, she would have had it. But it looks as though she's got uh, control of her game once again, uh, which is good because she's not that far behind. In fact, she wouldn't be if it hadn't been for the fourth spare by Amy Doobie. 973 through eight. She's pinned really well. Only has seven blocks and two eights in the match. Rest of all nines, tens. Yeah, she's been pretty lucky in that regard because uh, she has been throwing the ball way, way off to the right, except for the last several boxes. Seems to have found her way again. She looked lost there for four or five frames. Amy Doobie in the bonus. Back to Mike Warren. Well, I tell you what, when she hits the head pin, she gets action, leaving just the 10 pin. She was on the Brooklyn side. That's back-to-back -back spare nine fills. Very One, nice. 103 through eight, up 30 in the string, six in the match, and a chance for three in a row and $25 in bonus money. Didn't need the cash. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, it's a harder shot for right-hander, obviously. Oh, it is. And that's in the channel, no good. Hit the wood first. that'll be a nine newcomers to the game if the ball hits a pin in the uh, the gutter comes out even as close as that was the uh, pins felled afterwards do not count on a roll here in the second of three almost a half Worcester and that ends up with a four fill although no spare to work on a 112 through nine she had lost the first 120 96 much more comfortable uh, here in the second. You know, a couple inches either way, she'd have had a much better shot. She punched it out just a little bit too full. She could match her 120 game that she just bowled if she can pick up two of these for an eight fill. Ah, well, she'll take a 119. Not to be ashamed. That's uh, a bit of average. 215 isn't it? through two. Yes. Currently 99. Was it 115 in her peak days? Yeah, sorry about that. I assigned the 120 to the wrong person. <laughs> it was Peggy who had the 120 last game. All right, Peggy My bad. down 30 coming in this in this string, up down just six in the match now. Back to Mike. And again, she went a little bit too far to the right. The ball never really grabbed and, and came back. Took out the six and the nine, especially when she had a chance with two kind of less than great frames for Amy at the end. One mark to take the lead, possibly, or tie it. And that's a tough shot. I couldn't read her lips, but I think it was a bad word. <laughs> it's a funny game, isn't it? You can, you can hit the head pin a lot or just be yeah. right around it, and all of a sudden, yeah. your ball just tails off. Right above the WON Sports logo in New York. And a good, a good fill after the uh, two and then the, the zip on that. So that gives her 80 through nine. She's down 32 in the string, down eight in the match. Yeah. Mark eight to tie. One string left after this on Candle Promoter Network and W. Owen Sports. It's going to be a lot closer than I thought it was going to be when Amy really took off with four spares in this game and kind of faded at the end. But this is not a, a double wood spare like this. 
Really tough. The four horsemen, but the five and the eight behind. Oh, good try. Jeez. Heck of a bid. Leaving the seven pin. Amy will lead going into the final string. She is so good on those one pin spares, especially in the corner. The seven and the ten. She nails them all the time. So we have uh, less than a mark difference, I think. Yes. If I yes. do the math right. So 119 to 90, 29 pin win that time for Amy Doobie. She's up five in the match, 210, 215 to 210. Greg Gouillard. That's right. We'll be right back here on the Anilpin Bowling Network and WON Sports in just a moment. <laughs> Trick or treat! Till you hear what just happened. The evidence of Metropolis Science Department claims that the quakes are aftershocks coming from the town of Lakeland. The most disturbing part is that the evidence points to the abandoned Mark Luther pool house. After today, I am going to make sure that whoever did this goes down and I will take this whole place with it. And if I'm right, there's gonna be hell to pay. Welcome back to our third and final string from Extra Lane Shooters Pub on Cannibal Network and the WON Sports Network. Paul Grant, Mike Warren, Greg Lee, Greg, Greg Guya, and Bob Lee here. Greg, great job in the technology and stats. Thank you very I much. I always call you Greg. I always call you Greg Lee because you and Bob are two of a kind. You know, <laughs> very, very <laughs> smart. And That's high praise. I appreciate that. All right, so ready to start a final string. AB Doobie, red hot. Second string, one nineteen to ninety. Had four spares, almost five. And she has a five pin lead. If there's a tie after three, we do a one string roll off till somebody wins. A full string. Full string. All right. I like those two boxes on the old Channel 5 days. I have to cancel my dinner reservations. Beautiful ball. Eight, nine. First strike almost. Seven pin left up. Red hot since the second string after opening 96 string. Oh, that one's got to go. This should be a slam dunk. Or at least a layup. And missed it. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Both, both missed their chances on those wood. Yeah, That's right, they swipes. both have one of those. Current statistics right now. Paul Grant special, missed the second, make the third. Ten to start the final string. Five marks to four, and pinning is within two right now, slightly in favor of Peggy. Great match, Mike. Lane four, the left of our pair today at Exeter Lanes, and a punch out, almost a, almost a uh, spread eagle. Known as a clip wing eagle, a corner pin missing ah, off a spread eagle. There you go. And of course, you want to go for the two pins on this. A lot of people go two and a three. Of course, I never knew that growing up. I always went for three. Have you ever made that? The, uh, ah, probably, probably once or twice. And I know I made it once, and that's it. I never, never make the easy shots. I always make the hardest shots. <laughs> that's a 110 bowl on my peak year. 
Well, in one week of no practice. Pretty good. And where'd you oh, ball back in the day? Fairway, Natick. Nine blocks, 19 through two to start a third string. Amy, Amy Doobie up by five. Peggy Donnelly needs a mark to take the lead. And despite having a tough string of the 90, she's still in the game. I'm sure she hated to see that 24 pin lead evaporate and completely go away. Off to the right again. Takes down the seven, one, two, wiggling four and the 10. So it didn't hit the pin she wanted, but she threw it more firmly. And I think that helped with the action she got. This is for a spare. Missed inside, the one and the 10. Madison Survivor takes on the winner of this match. Followed by Faye Sawyer, number one seed, Sharon Britton, a good young 20 year old bowler on the rise. Nine box. Well, I see Marianne Kelly in the house, which means Miss Riva can't be too far behind. Mrs. Riva, I should say. Down one in the string, six in the match. Now back to lane four. Goes left, gets the dreaded half Worcester. Greg, explain the half Worcester our fans in WON Sports Network. Once upon a time, a match many decades ago between two Boston, uh, Boston and a Worcester team. Uh, Worcester team punched out that dreaded leave on the first ball in the last frame of a big match, and the Boston team jeered, you're halfway back to Worcester. The name kind of stuck, and she put it in the same spot. That's a Paul Grant shot. Kind of like, kind of like that. <laughs> Got to stop watching my videos. Many of two boxes. And she'll take six out of that mess. 15 through two, down four in the string, nine in the match. Play by play with Mr. Mike Morin. That's tough. Amy Doobie on lane five. Looking for her first mark since the eighth box of last game. She had four spares and some really, really good fills. And the ball never quite climbed the hill. The run of this match gets $200. Huh? 250 for the fourth place bowler, Glad 500 for that. third, 700 for second, and $1,200 first place prize. Plus, after the match is over, we'll do our strike challenge for the second time. Madison arrived the only one to win it last round at Sanford Bowl Armour in Sanford, Maine, in the mixed ladder. Watch on the Bowl Network. Yes, it was. Man, she was on fire. We had that a lot of day. eight and nine drops, too, in that as well. Yes. So that's what, $100 for a. $100 for the strike challenge, yep. The more you go to the ladder, the more chance you have. <laughs> Now, does it escalate kind of like the old? Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't build it up. Okay. We'd like to do it eventually, but we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that for next season. Eight box, 27 through three in string number three. Uh, both please share this match, your friends with family. Yes, Invite please the bowl, do. Kenneth and Bowling. Both these bowlers have certainly run hot and cold today, which is not that unusual in the game, as you know, if you're a regular bowler. No, I was like that all the time. I was a street bowler. Kind of like the Red Sox have been this year. I know. Win six, lose five. Yep. 136, 81, and 169. My record night in Salem, Mass. Old Canop and Lanes. That was a tough house, though. Never bowled there. F four down, six to go. Tough leave. Missing the object pin once again, leaving the one and the nine. She punches and it straight through. She should, uh, well, now with that deadwood cozying up to the head pin and could deflect it. Yeah, not exactly how she wanted to do it. Nine, 36 through four in the third. Doors open for Peggy Donnelly, down nine in the match. Basically down to Mark, all told, so big opportunity. Did you eat your sky bar yet, by the way? I'm sorry? Did you eat your sky oh, bar? I, I have not, I'm saving it. It's got four different flavors inside the chocolate bars. I'm not sure I ever had one. Oh, they're excellent. They used to be two for dollar market basket. Now they're like two, <laughs> for, two for 20 now, I think, nowadays. <laughs> Should be a collector's item. Oh, you make me laugh. <laughs> Peggy Donnelly. Down four in the string, nine in the match. Back to Mike Morin. Didn't have quite the firm release on that one, and the ball went to the right. Six and the nine are down. Only a one spare two fill in that fourth box, second yeah. string. Needs to take advantage of Amy's uh, slowing down. How many times has she done that today? Can't Going find to the, the range. Mm. It's tough. Not an easy game. I always want to buy a GPS when I can hit the head pin. 
Hey, I see Janet Pock is in the house today. Yeah, Hall of Famer. We'll try to talk to her if we can. We really should. Well, it was uh, a good, a good uh, out, as they say. I'm sure it's not good enough for her, but uh, Peggy needs to uh, give a firm relief as she every time she releases the ball a little more firmly and directly. Man, does she make the pins fly? And that one. Uh, lemon drop, one dollar yeah. a candle pins for cancer. Great for the charity, lousy for the bowler. Five it's on a mark. Four pin of the six pin optional one dollar donation. She recognized and put the one finger up. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, I got them all trained. <laughs> <laughs> they went to the Paul Grant University of Lemon Drops <laughs> in wild <Wow> shirts. <laughs> and does Miss the second make the third? I think they call that Pavlovian. <laughs> All right, there it is, the three, the nine, and the ten, with some wood angled between the three and the ten. Should help her. Ah, oh, tough or break. Not. <laughs> or not. Eight, you cannot take advantage. 31 through four, down five in the string, ten in the match. She won the first, 120-96. Amy came stowing back, 120-90. And Amy Doobie on lane five, Mike Moran. Can't she hold on to her lead here? Update from Bob Lee. Yeah, just a... Uh, Little comment on Peggy. Peggy, who's been up in 27, 28 throughout the rest of the game, just dropped down to 26 for that last series. Three of those balls hit the six pin. Um, you know, you fill in the blanks on that. It looked like a, a release was a little, little bit tired. We're going to try to talk to Janet Pock, Hall of Famer, here in attendance. And it reminds me, August 6th, the Candlepin first annual Hall of Fame. World record holder Pro Bowlers match at Ports of Bolarama, 11 a.m. Help donate Candlepins for Cancer. August 6th, Sunday, 11 a.m., five string match. Bowl with the pros and donate to Candlepins for Cancer, a 501c3 charity. Candlepin Bowlers, helping Candlepin Bowlers going through cancer treatments. Helping many families, would you say 11 so far? Well, on the just in the wow shirts alone, the lemon drop five. We've got $35,000 worth of fa to, to families so far and climbing. Wow. Maybe 36 soon just 16 those two ventures i've been doing personally the lemon drop pool which is the four six pin of your first shot and some give 20 dollars and one guy gave 50 the other day at the mixed worlds uh dave hodge malian thank you dave for that generous donation of five families soon to be six on the lemon drop pool and soon to be 12 on the wow shirts alone plus obviously we get money as well outside donations as well I'm going to need an accountant to keep track of all these things you got going no. for Candlepins for Cancer. Nicely done. I want to go to. I was. I was. I wanted to be an accounting major. It never worked out that way. But Alfie, I'm an accountant by day. Let me know. <laughs> okay, Fifty-five through six in the final string of the match. If they tie a one-string roll-up, Peggy Donnelly is down ten in the match. Definitely a possibility. Both these ladies have been within uh, at least since the second game about a mark part or less. Uh, that's a little bit better and and some wood to help out uh, big spare wow it's been a while a, a deep sigh of relief you could see in her face relieved first mark in a long long time well she did it in the fifth box last game and she had three in her first string. 41 half plus a ball. Trying to turn it around after a, a stellar 120 first game. Strike would be huge. Oh boy. Oh, that's it. All right, so again, firmly shot, well placed, an eight fill on the spare, and some wood to spray around with a little bit of luck. It's a six and the seven. So far, four spares, one strike in the match, the number four seed, Becky Donnelly. Oh, what a shot! Back to back! Back hit it! I, I didn't expect to see the ball go over and take the seven pin. 49 through five, 59 of the ball through six, and Mike Warren says, Wow! <laughs> Say it like you mean it. <laughs> well, I, didn't want to disturb, I didn't want to disturb Amy. Amy Doobie got the four, seven, eight. And we got an interesting one here, folks. Final four boxes, overtime. A possibility for a spare. Beautiful shot. Yeah. It's good. It. Came back for the queen pin the five. What a match. 65 and a ball through seven. Wow. That was the 
fastest ball of the match. Sometimes, 31 miles an hour. Sometimes your adrenaline's pumping, you throw a little harder. Do you have any idea what uh, the speed is on uh, Peggy's ball? Peggy, Peggy just brought it back up to 27 on that last one. Okay. Yeah. On the That's bonus, four, five, six, still going. Wiggling one, six to the right, four, seven left, 71 through seven. You go between the one and the four here? I think you do. This could be huge for her. Got it! Wow! Both balls back to back here at Exeter. Wow, one of the ball through eight. And another 30. That whole set was 31 miles an hour. The fastest ball she's thrown all, all game. <laughs> the energy is high. Both a chance for bonus money. $25 in bonus money for three in a row. Wow. What a battle. 59, the ball through six after 31 through four. On the spare, beautiful ball, six, the check mark. The right is the, the left pin is the five, so the right is the three, six, ten. Spare eight, spare six. 65 through six. Tied in the match. For another one. Another one. Oh, on the object pin, too bad. And she's up against two marks, now she'll trail again. Major League Baseball has Amy analytics. Eight, eight, I don't think okay, we'll, we'll check Amy's score. It's wrong, we think. Oh, it was a good try. Nice out nine. I think Amy scores off by 10 pins, actually. We'll find out. 55. A little, a little math correct. It's 81 in a ball through eight, not 91. 81 in a ball through eight, not 91, as I said earlier. My it's mistake. A virtual two pin match now. 81 the ball for Amy. 478. How'd you read that scoreboard? <laughs> Speaking of score reading, how much, how's your eyes feeling like since you had the cataract uh, surgery? You know what? So far, after four days, not a big improvement yet, I'm hoping. <laughs> and it's Dark Shadows parallel time. 5, 9, 6, 10, left to right. Great TV show. Barnabas Collins, Quentin Collins, parallel time, universe. I was in college, I missed it. I have it all on DVD and VHS. Tough leave, got one, seven. 81 through eight situation right now, tied in the string, he needs a 10 in the match, plus the ball. Chance to try to put it away here, if she can. Uh, it took the wind out of her sails after two spectacular spares. Great match, both ladies though, win or lose. Wrap it up here, Mike. All right. A little skip lob there and a three fill on her spare. Gives her 84 in the eighth frame. So correction, she's up eight in the match. F five coming in, eight in the match is the lead. Oh, same spot. Just trying to make it on the inside there and missed everything. So these are open for Peggy Donnelly still. Eight pin lead. The big out and a tough five. Uh, 89 through 9. She lost the first 120-96. 120. A correction, 119-90. Win of the second. Pin match here. It is 8 coming into the final two. Well, there's a big split. Now with and no wood to help. Makes it now a 3-pin match. 3-pin match. Way far to the left side. So her speed has uh, has gone up to 31 miles an hour, as Bob Lee pointed out, which in those big boxes was helpful. Don't know what it is now. At that spare three, a five and a seven, and 96 for the second time. Sandwich with a 119. Ends up with a 311 over average of 99 currently. And Peggy Darling has a chance. She needs a mark. Craig, what's the situation here? Two tenths is a tie. Any mark can a good count is a win. She was down five coming in, and Amy has left the door open for her all string. Four spares to two, the string one in favor of Peggy Donnelly. Well, she got a piece of the head pin and didn't leave herself anything really to work with. So pins two, ten, falling. two tens, we have overtime. So if she doesn't get a 10 here, she'll need a mark to win. Oh, oh what an effort. Oh, <laughs> critical, she got that corner pin. Now the tens are available. Queen pin the five yeah. for the ladies. Yeah, exactly. 
tight battle here. Extra Lane Shooters Pub at Exeter, New Hampshire on Cannibal Bowling Network and WON Sports. Big 10, 10 to tie, a mark to win. Final box of the match, maybe. 91 through nine. No pressure. Hey, everybody knows. Wow. 10 to tie, a mark to win. On the head pin. Check mark again. Yep. Five left, three, six, ten to the right. Go ahead, Mike. All right, that's the check mark. It is a three, five, six, and the ten. If she makes it, she'll need one pin to win. Because if she threw a gutter ball, it would still be a tie, but she wouldn't. Nope. Oh, it's a tough leave. Needs all three now, for overtime. A, now a ten is definitely going to be a challenge. All here. three to, for overtime. Anything else? Amy Doobie, the five C, will play Madison Riva next. Nope. And won't go a tough two pin oh, loss. 99 wow. 96. What a match. A great crowd on hand. Great applause. The final score Amy Doobie 311. Peggy Donnelly 309 on Camp and Bowling Network and WON Sports. Craig? <laughs> Thanks so much. Marks are uh, 7 to 6 in Doobie's favor. Pinning was exactly level. Some great counts on Donnelly from the field, but let's go talk to the bowlers. What a match that was. Oh, wow. And we still well, have three more matches left. I'll remind you, this match has been live on Candlepin Bowling Network. Please subscribe on YouTube and like and follow us on Facebook so that you're always in the know about, first of all, our upcoming matches and about all our other great Candlepin content. Mike Warren, what a match, huh? Could have gone either way. It, you know, it, it, the, whole, the whole day was back and forth. It was very streaky. And then it did come down to the very last ball. And that's how you like it. Yeah. All right, let's bring on the bowlers. All right, we got to, uh, let's bring in, you talk to Peggy, I'll talk to Amy this time. All right. Come on yeah. over, Peggy. <laughs> so did you have a good time today other well, than first, how it finished? Well, my first time doing it, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, I had a good time. So uh, I was observing uh, as a former 10-pin bowler that you have a somewhat similar style. And when you were firm with the ball, you had wonderful action. Yeah. And when you, when you dropped it, it just didn't work for you. Yeah, dropping it is not a good thing. Hey, I see some of your friends in the crowd today. Did you recently go to Yankee Stadium with some people in the crowd I here today? I did. We went and saw a Red Sox-Yankee game, and it was the only game they lost all weekend. <laughs> the Red Sox. Well. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> well, congratulations. It was really a treat to watch fun. you today. Thank you. All right, Peggy. And we have $200 for you, Peggy, also. All right. Amy Duke, number five, she goes on. Congratulations. Big win. After a tough start, down 24, what were yeah. you thinking at the time? Uh, it's just a long, it's a long day. It's a long three matches. Anything can happen in any string, any box. Just keep going. You, could see, you were both trying to put it away early on. Then you try to put it, it away, was, and you, the door is open all the time and couldn't close it. It was a really good match. It was very tight the entire time. It was, it was a lot of fun. Of course it was, yes. All right, the three-letter word for winning the first round, the second letter series. Wow! All right, Amy Dubey <laughs> plays Madison Robin next on Canada Bowl and Network and WON Sports. Back to Greg Gouya to wrap it up. Oh, yeah, we're going to do the strike challenge first, actually. Hold on. Yeah. All right, challenge. strike challenge. So Amy, Amy will go second. You won. You go first. So before we sign off, each ball will go for $100 strike challenge. There's something new, just did new for the start, first time this year. Good bid. Good try. All right. Peggy going for the strike, get $100. She uses lane four here in Exeter. Another good hit, won't go. Congratulations, ladies. Now back to Greg Gouya to wrap it up. Thanks so much for watching this presentation of Candlepin Bowling Network and WON Sports. For My name is Greg Gouyard for Paul, Mike, and Bob. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you for the next episode very soon.